Experiment. A scientific procedure undertaken to make a discovery, test a hypothesis, or demonstrate a known fact. Let's take this definition and make it our own, shall we? Artistic experiment. A moment in time when an artist puts aside all expectations and discipline to feel the freedom of trying something new just for the fun and joy of it. Quickly followed by the inherent discovery and testing of new techniques. I gotta tell you, this is the most fun I've had painting miniatures in a long time. Maybe ever. Greetings, good humans, and welcome to Tabletop Alchemy, where sometimes we stumble across something others have been doing for eons and realize we're very, very late to the game. And we thank our patrons for kindly supporting these exercises into newfound discoveries. Today, we're going full Bob Ross, and we're casting aside any goals, expectations, and worries brought about by having to do something right. My buddy Hoffman was telling me about how years ago, and I mean decades, he would do a lot of his mini painting with inks specifically the long discontinued Games Workshop inks. He loved them, and I always admired his painting chops, so I promptly engaged that hobbyist shopping module and went and got too much stuff. And then we hopped on a FaceTime call just to hang out and hobby. And now I've got all these inks and new paints on my table, and I don't quite know what to do with them. I know people have been painting with inks for decades, but I've never really used them, so I was like, I want to try these out, but what do I try them out on? And that's when it hit me. It was time to leverage the pile of shame. I had this group of skeletons from the Curse City box that I had started with the intention of using them as my first test subjects for oil washes, which is another technique I've never tried. I bought all the oil wash supplies like two years ago, maybe longer. Leave me alone. So I pulled one of these guys out and used it as a test subject. I thought, okay, screw it. They're just sitting over there gathering literal dust. Let's just grab one and try these inks out on it. Now, this is the crux of today's topic. I'll talk through the painting I did, but here's the TLDR. It'll sound dumb, but I've never grabbed a mini and just messed around with putting paint on it. Never without the idea that I'm painting this figure to be a finished miniature. I've never thought, okay, let's just play around. I'm not going to finish this mini. Let's just do some tests and see what happens. And I'll tell you what, this was so ridiculously fun. Liberating is what I'd really call it. I just used random colors and random techniques, and I was just carefree. You're going to hear a lot of these words repeated and you could ascribe that to enthusiastic emphasis. I can't overstate how awesome this was for me. Now, I don't know the first thing about inks, and it just doesn't matter. This miniature is going to look like a clown, and that simply doesn't matter either. So I've got all these inks, but also the other day I picked up some of Vallejo's version of contrast paints, which they call Express Color. The reason I wanted to check them out is I read a review online that said they dry slower and flatter than GW contrast paints. If anyone needs more working time, it's me. So, we're going to play around with some of these closet skeletons and just have fun. I'm also trying out a new camera position which worked nicely, except for the fact that my hair got into almost every shot. Now, I know, you're like, dude, Ignatius, didn't you just buy a camera that had live HDMI out so you could monitor your shots? Yes. Yes, I did, dear viewer. Exactly that. And what happened is, when I looked up to check the framing and focus, my hair would leave the shot. So, I didn't realize what was happening. Laugh it up, fuzzball. Okay, I started with some AK Interactive Sepia ink for the breastplate. I thinned it down a little with water and just wanted to see what this color was like. I've noticed the AK brand Sepia and Burnt Umber are a lot more gray than other brands. But all good. This is what experimenting is all about. So to see some actual brown colored ink, I tried this Dollar Rowney Burnt Umber on the scale mail. Basically, each part of the model represents a test area for something, right? So I put full strength burnt umber on the lower scale male stuff and then thinned it out for the upper scales just to see what the difference was like. One thing I've been noticing with inks is they seem to help me with learning glazing. Working with ink is pretty fun because they are so fluid, but the glazing is great because they're highly pigmented as well as thin. So I glazed some Dollarani purple into the breastplate just to practice adding some shadow. The purple is cool, but what if we glaze some Liquitex burnt sienna and carbon black over that purple? It's pretty fun just messing with the colors like this. Okay, let's try some of these Express colors. I'm thinning this Wasteland Brown way down with the Express Medium and trying it out on the Skelly's Bones. Two things of immediate note. One, the Express paint is pretty nice, easily on par with Citadel's contrast line. Two, this paint smells like Vallejo added some kind of perfume to it. They didn't, of course, but there is a definite weirdly fruity scent smell to this paint. And their inks smell like this too. I'm very susceptible to harsh chemical fumes, but this stuff doesn't bother me. I've just never used an acrylic hobby paint, other than Tamiya paints, that have a 
tangible odor. Now, this line of metallic colors from Vallejo Metal Color is hands down the best metallic paints I've ever come across. This copper is awesome. Now, let's try out this dark turquoise ink. I watered it way down to see what it does over the copper. I think it's pretty cool. Maybe it's not the correct color for verdigris, but who cares? Now, for a great big experiment. What will thin down burnt sienna do as a wash over all this yellow? Again, this is the luxury of just messing around. It doesn't matter. We're just going to find out. I definitely need to experiment more with trying to get it smooth, but the overall weathered look is pretty good. How about on the backside we mix purple with burnt umber and try that? I must say I'm pretty happy I have a pile of opportunity to leverage this way. This is just too fun. So this mix was a bit too thin to make a dramatic change, so I just got some less diluted and tried adding that to the deeper areas on the tavern. I missed capturing putting some green Vallejo ink on this Vambrace, but here I'm deepening the shadows by glazing some more into it. All right, how about some Vallejo yellow ink full strength all over the shield? Why? I don't know. I just wanted to try the yellow ink out somewhere. So there we go. Now, I also picked up some bottles of Vallejo's new formula game color. I got some purple because I don't typically paint much purple, and I wanted to see what this new formula is like. So here's Midnight Purple on the Spear Blade. It's very fluid and nice to work with. Feels kind of like a thinner version of Citadel paint. Side note, I swear this is not a sponsored video by any of the companies I mentioned today. I used a lighter shade of purple to blend some highlights, and one of the properties of this new formula is it stays wetter longer. And I'm really liking this stuff. Damn. I might have to get some more colors. I put some AK sepia ink on the haft of the spear just to see what it looked like full strength. It's a pretty warm dark gray. I picked up this Dalarani sap green ink just because I like the color. So I'm trying it out here on our guy's metal Nikes. And this is a great color. Some of this I'm thinning, some not. I didn't keep track because I'm a wild man. All right, for these leather straps, I'm going to try out the AK ink called Sooty Black. And we'll put it down full strength. It reminds me of a cross between Citadel's Black Legion and Basilicanum Gray, but it's thinner and flows easier, obviously because it's an ink. I wanted to try the dark turquoise ink full strength, so why not put some on the yellow shield? Why not try out making a blend from yellow into blue shadow? Using some water to thin it and smooth the transition really made for a nice gradient. I've always had problems doing this with regular paint, so this is pretty cool. I have this raw sienna that I've used like once, but I thought it might be a perfect shading for the yellow, so on it goes. I think it's a good weathering color for the yellow, and at first, I thought I wouldn't put it over the blue, but then I thought, it's a pretty light color, it might just unify the whole thing. So onto the blue it went. As I mentioned earlier, this metal color line is staggeringly awesome. And now, I'm putting some thinned down express color copper brown over that spear just to see what it does. The idea being maybe it'll create some rusty weathering. I just kept going with that gunmetal, adding some chipping and little pops of metallic shine on the edges of things. This shield is literally surprising me with how cool it's coming out. Does it look realistic? We don't care. I like these metal highlights so much, I just start adding them to other bits and pieces everywhere. This is another advantage to painting a skeleton though, right? Weathering and dirty paint jobs are kind of the effect we're going for. I put full strength Dalarani Burnt Umber and AK Burnt Umber on the base just to check them out. Their consistency and high pigment makes them pretty ideal for quickly covering bases. For some specific rust color, I mixed yellow ink, red ink, and express copper brown and thinned the mix with water. I even put some rust on the shield. As Hoffman would say, we're going full clown suit. Does bronze or copper rust? Nope, but say it with me now. Who cares? Someone out there does care deeply, and they're having a conniption fit right about now. You're welcome, and I'm gonna double down and throw some verdigris on the shield too, right next to the rust. This guy might actually be usable. I mean, like, he may be graduating from test subject to tabletop. Okay, so I originally thought I'd use this guy for the oil test on top of everything else, but I decided I like how he turned out, so I'm gonna splash up Two more skellies specifically to try the oil washes on. We're not going to watch all that, of course, except for these two tidbits right here. I decided to tint this guy's bones with some green, like he's a mossy skeleton or something. I mixed express color orc skin with dwarf skin and thinned it out, and I kind of like how it looks. I also got what's known as uh, a wild hair and washed some purple over that yellow tavern just to see what it would do. It didn't go on as smoothly as some of the other inks, so I'm just making a mental note of that. Good for chunky weathering, maybe. Some thin Down Express Wasteland Brown did a pretty nice job of shading the tabard. Now, here's a third skeleton, and the reason I'm doing two to test oils on is I'm going to gloss coat one of them to see how much of a difference that makes in working with the oil wash. But most of the inks dry to a satin finish anyway, so this might not be much of a difference test. So I put the gloss coat down with a brush, and then I let it dry for 24 hours. Not sure if that was necessary, but, you know, 
relax when you can, right? So I mixed up an oil wash with this Mona Lisa stuff and a bit of black and a bit of burnt umber oil paint. And here goes nothing. Right away, this is looking too thin to me. So I'm gonna add some more black for attempt number two. And this is much better, I think. We just slop this stuff on, just making sure it gets everywhere. The gloss coat definitely makes the oil slide off the raised areas way more than it does on the non-gloss coated figure. One huge advantage to oils is they just don't dry. You have plenty of working time. The main pain in the butt with this oil stuff is trying to keep all the tools, the brushes, the palette, which is metal by the way, and paper towels with oil thinner on them, keeping all that stuff separate from any water-based stuff. Having never painted with oils before, all this is new to me. I waited 20 minutes before going back over the minis with a Q-tip sponge thing that was dampened with a little bit of thinner. I can already see that this procedure is another technique that's easy to do, but hard to master. I also think that this oil wash technique would be good to try on a mini that's been painted in a more clean and proper fashion to see what it does. Because of the hours long drying time, the option to go back and add more or remove more remains viable for quite a while. So here they are, the subjects of the artistic experiment sessions. They've all been matte varnished and based. This was my very first one, the one that kicked off this whole thing. You can see I had a sword here to mess around with and I did most of the inks on this one full strength. And this one, my buddy Hoffman did when he came up for a visit and wanted to try out contrast paints for the first time. And here are the three we did in today's video. This is the first one and it didn't get the oil wash. Overall, I dig this guy, but I could see now maybe putting an oil wash on him just to get a little more patina across all the surfaces and some better outline. This guy had the gloss coat put on before the oil wash and he looks pretty good too. The oil wash seems to work like a matte coat as well. Not in so far as making a matte finish, but the oil wash does work towards unifying all the different surfaces. This dude got the oil wash without the gloss coat. And I'm not sure there's too much of a difference between using a gloss coat and not. All in all, I think the oil washes are pretty cool. They're easy to do. They just have that annoying 24 hour drying time to consider, which isn't really that big of a deal, but it's a thing. It was just so much fun to mess around and try stuff out with no expectations. And the idea that there just weren't any mistakes made everything take on this totally carefree, have fun with paints vibe that I just had to share. This mindset is a new one for me and I learned quite a bit. Mostly I learned that I need to paint with this mindset going forward. So go grab a mini out of that pile of shame. Yeah, that pile of shame. And just have some fun experimenting with it. Try out some inks or whatever strikes your fancy. It'll be a good time, trust me. See ya.